Mr. Truck here with an exciting truck review. This time it's a 2016 Ram 3500. This is the limited edition. All kinds of toys on this truck. It's a dually, long bed, crew cab, four wheel drive. We're pulling this six horse Cimarron all aluminum trailer. How much power do we have, Dave? Dave's my son. How much power? We got 385 horsepower and uh, 900 foot pound torque. Awesome, that's plenty of torque, and most of that 900 foot-pounds of torque comes out in third gear. Otherwise, you'd be spinning your tires like crazy, but that was new not too long ago that they introduced 900 foot-pounds of torque. So come join us. <laughs> Hey Dave, go in there and see how you fit in that front seat. Oh, that's easy. Got plenty of leg room and the steering wheel fits. Oh yeah. Right? Tilt wheel. Button hard, didn't run into anything. And you got 10 way power seats. Yeah. Well close the door and see how you, you fit with the armrest and all the controls in the door. Yeah, they're close, but they're not too far away. Well, that's good. You want it all be ergonomic now? Let me show you your tricks with the mirror. I love power folding mirrors. I love power telescoping mirrors. Not all of them have that. But that is awesome. You look like a trucker, son. Okay, Dave. I know you're not Kelsey. Let's see how you fit in that back seat. I know she has a different size legs and body, and let's see how your body fits oh, the yeah. seat. Oh yeah. Oh, that's room. nice. Plenty of room. My yeah. knees aren't hitting the back of the seat. Well, that's that's good. Once you got enough floor space, I like that. That's the size of the truck that I like to drive. Awesome. Okay. Okay, son. Show us uh, show us how these drop down doors work. They're actually a drop down feed door for your horses. So you can check on them. See if they still have their halters on and their lead ropes and their feed bags and all that stuff. Cool. I love this Cimarron Trader. It's like a piece of art. Awesome. Dressing room and tack room in the front part of the trailer. So you got two rows of saddle racks and bridle racks. Everything. Mr. Truck here, some exciting news. My book is finally out. I wrote this book with Andre Smirnoff of the Fast Lane Truck. It's the, the Fast Lane Truck's guide to pickup trucks. And what that means is Andre talks about all the different stats in here, the different races we did, the different tests we did, climbing up the mountain with loads, doing miles per gallon with loads, doing the track with loads, all these different things uh, to help judge a truck and then pick about the best ones. He talks about future trucks. On my side, I talk about how to judge a used truck. Should you buy a new truck or a used truck? Should you buy a diesel or a gas truck? So all those things are in there. We talk about transmissions. We talk about trailers, how to get the trailer matched to your truck so it's a safe towing experience. So we talk about payload, how to figure that, girls combined weight rating, axle weight rating, tongue weight, all those different things. We talk about teenage safety when they learn to drive. So we're doing a lot of that in the book. And you can get this at all the independent stores like Tattered Cover. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Barnes & Noble. And it's just awesome. And if you want to look up Google, just go Truck Nets Book. Make sure you put book in there or you might be surprised. But buy the book. Well, here we are in this 2016 Ram 3500, and it's the limited edition. So this is like the top of the line. It's MSRP is 76,090. Got my son David here with me. Kelsey is still recovering from her baby, and we'll be 
be back soon. But now we're pulling the Cimarron Six Horse Trader. Of course, there's no weight back there. It's only 8,000 pounds. But it's a big trader. If we had a load, it would be up about maybe 15, 16,000 pounds. But GBW on that, same as the truck, 14,000. And this truck, it's got that heavy, high output coming, <coughs> which they you know, changed this last go around up to 900 foot pounds of torque. 385 horsepower, but uh, this one I think you're rated to tow if you had the right configuration for 31,250. Now, this one, uh, the way this sets with the screw cab, long bed, four wheel drive, and this package is it'll tow maximum goose stack of 30,310. When I was with the TFL truck folks the last weekend, we did pull 30,000 pounds up the Ike. And it did well. It's not the fastest decent truck out there, but I don't think that was their purpose. This has the ice transmission, so you, between the diesel and the transmission, you got $11,000 invested in this. Of course, the big camper mirror, the big towing mirrors, which these have the most reach of anybody's mirror. They don't have the biggest glass, but the biggest reach. And of course, this dually is the widest fender dually. It's still like eight foot. But you got a lot of fender back there, so you better have to run these toy mirrors out all the time you're driving. You can empty. What do you think, son? Is it smooth? Nice. Seems good. Very comfortable truck. It's got nice interior, nice leather and stuff. Yeah, the seats are good. Everything lines up symmetrically in this. I like the layout of the dash, big screen. Four wheel drive is easy to get to. The brake control, the you know, manual brake control is very easy to get to on this. Exhaust brake, tow haul motor, and you need is right there. This person says cool then heated seats. But uh, it's a light load. Some of the RPMs are running very low. We're really about 1900. So it's very quiet in here. With a light load like this, you're not really struggling. When I did the, you know, the Ike with the TFL folks, we were pulling 30,000 pounds. We were you know, manually shifting. So we're running close to 3,000 RPMs a lot of the time, and it was loud. It was very loud in the cabin. You should not be doing that the whole trip. And if you're driving on right here in eastern Colorado, it'd be like Kansas. You know, you're not going to be running the RPMs up at all. Just be cruising along. But uh, this puppy's got a sprayed midliner. It has the high camera, so it's, it's, it's got a screen. It comes up, and it has a button. You just push on the screen when you put it in reverse. You have the eye camera so you can see the gooseneck. We just hook this gooseneck up to it, and I'll show you that video. But uh, this, because it's a high output version for the most powerful truck in their one ton class, 3500, this has a 410 rear end. But, another good is it starts out as a longhorn, then you know it's equipped up to the limited. It has got all the toys. By itself, 3085. Well, it's really raining that. Get some of those Oklahoma crickets off the nose of this Cimarron. That's where Cimarron makes these craters. Check it, Shay, check it, Shaw, Oklahoma. There's a lot of black crickets in the summer down there in Oklahoma. It rumbles right along. I like the Ace automatic. It doesn't ship very often. I haven't seen the ship since we started. Yeah, there's but a we're pretty flat. We're, we're, yeah, we're going to find some here. hills. <laughs> it's not too loud. It is a little bit loud. Well, it's, you know, a lot of people like that because, you know, you're it's in a, a It's a Cummins. Yeah, you know, you got a Cummins. <laughs> and when the exhaust brake is on, you, you know, back off the throttle, let off the gas. That's the great shift in there. The exhaust brake, you hear that? Yeah, people like that sound. It's a lot like oh, a yeah, you can really hear it. Yeah, so that's uh, a lot of people are big fans of that noise. They want to hear the turbine whine, they want to hear the exhaust brake, they want to hear the diesel. And these, they went to pilot injection in 2003. Before that, they were dramatically louder. And this truck rides really well. It's uh, they went to the hydraulic cab mount, same year GM did, which would have been, I think, 2011. Ford didn't do it until 17. Uh, that's on the crew cab. Probably my biggest regret about this truck is only has a 32 gallon fuel tank. It's not enough when you're pulling a big trailer. And then, yeah, then Ford did go up to, they went up to 48 gallon on a long bed. So, yeah. 
and they went up to, I think, seven gallon on depth tank. This had the five, four used to have the five, so that's a big deal. You don't want to have to fill all that stuff up very often. When you go to cross country, you want to be able to find the cheapest fuel station, which you can do on, you know, on your phone. But anyhow, we you like the layout on this. Got Alpine, Alpine, truck. Alpine sound system. Yep, Alpine. That's all that matters, is that it's I suppose that's true. The 67 diesel does really well. It's active air. It's got all those things that came out a couple years ago. I do like the camera for the stick and of course the bubble ball camera too. That's going to be the standard thing. Hook it up fast. 10 way power seats. How many ways can you go with the power seat? It took me a while to get it adjusted, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, it's too many adjustments, but anyway, that's how it goes. Push button start, I love that. Now this also, talking about suspension, this has an air ride, an airbag on each side. But on this one, you run on 2500, that has coil springs, and if you go air ride, then they just pick the coil up, put the airbag in there, it's right above your axle. I like that setup, I think that's a good ride. This one is just like an aftermarket accessory. You still have the leaves, and they put the airbag in, most of the differential on the axle, and it doesn't actually make the ride better, but it does keep it from squatting. <coughs> Dodges and Rams used to all squat quite a bit. This one doesn't. It's got a button here for alternative uh, uh, driving heights. So when loaded, you can push that when you're stopped, and it'll actually lower the cab or the truck. It lowers about an inch, but that's nice. But this one here, with only 8,000 pounds on it, wouldn't let me do it. It says on there that I had too light of a load and didn't want to drop me down, which I thought that's kind of weird, so they'll drop me down whenever I darn well want, but oh well, that's how it is. But for a dually winter, it's a pretty smooth ride. Not too much balance. Yeah, and it's really not a big improvement when it's empty. I was hoping that air ride would improve the empty ride, but it really doesn't. But I was really glad to see Ram do it. I mean, you know, I think air ride, you look at some eyes, but for 40 years, I think all these heavy duty pickups need air ride of some kind, and I'm, seeing, I'm glad to see Ram leading the way there, it's a good thing. But, big crew cab. I like the grill. I like the front of the truck. You like that? Yeah, limited grill came out with you a couple years ago, and it's, I mean, I I like the old grill, but yeah, I like the, the crosshair grill, that's what it's called, like in the scope of your rifle. Yeah, this was a dramatic change from that. I like this grill better than I like the Rebel grill. So this is for Chinaz and Nephew. I'll have to look at the tailgate. It's a giant ram. Spelled that on the tailgate. Oh, yeah. Big letters. Uh, so you're that definitely is one thing a billboard. Yeah, you can definitely. <laughs> it's way bigger logo-wise as far as competitors. Yeah. Yeah, you know you're following a ram. That is limited. It's like you've got little bags in the back of the seats. I wonder who they copied with that. Got plenty of places to stick things in the center console. You can move all that stuff out of the way and get more depth. Get more UBS plugins and 12 volt plugins and 110. Got a 150 watt plug in, get your computer out here and have a good time going down the road. As long as I've got a driver, you know, so I can be in the back seat like a lemon. If I had a mega cab, that would really be cool. I'd like to be back there and do my thing and sleep in and play on the computer. Thanks. Why you drove cross country? Yeah. Does they keep point. the mega, mega cab they still make? Yeah, they do, but you can only get it in the short bed, which is like a six foot three. So you can't, I guess it's a long bed. This has the factory sprayed in bed liner, the factory gooseneck hitch back there. What am I leaving out? See, the diesel options are coming. So I have, but this is 8,995. I'm showing the ice in this 2,595. So you're getting over there 9 and 2. You're over 11, almost $12,000 for the diesel combination with the ice and automatic. And it's a six speed. The diesel exhaust brake on it, it's like a two speed thing. It's got an automatic setting which lets it ramp up slower so you don't you know, move the horses all over the place. And it's got a full exhaust brake. I usually use a full exhaust brake whenever I run it. Just leave it on. Load. Got yowzer. So I would have time to put six horses back there. 
but still, you know, if we loaded this to the maximum and got 14, 15,000 pounds, excuse me, it'd be nothing for the truck. That would be half of what it would tow. And these Cummins, when you can get them maxed out, and the RPM's up, that's when they really perform well. Nothing wrong with the way they perform anyway, but I think that's kind of when they're made, made to be maxed out. They like to work. They're locomotives. They really like to work. This truck by itself weighs 8,250, grossing like 16,2, which puts it just about 8,000 in the trailer. Payload on this is somewhere near six, and that's that's pretty good. I mean, that's the thing with payload anymore is so many manufacturers are giving you some giant trailer number, towing number. But they don't give you enough payload to where you can ever actually use that if you're going to stay with the you know the SAE J2807 standards. Would be say 15 on a gooseneck, 10 on a bumper ball. I like to go a little higher on a gooseneck, but, you know, you've got to have a lot of payload left over for that. So, anyway, one of those things. We bring it out in the book. Me and Andre, you know, it's a fascinating truck. We wrote a book called Truck Nuts. And it's, you know, it's a guy who talks about all the tests we did at TF Bell. And I'm talking about, you know, different things with trailers and pick out the right trailer, whether you should buy a new truck or a used truck, and whether you should buy a diesel or a gas engine, all the things that, you know, I try to bring up, and Andre brings out about things that you have questions about, and you can't find the answers for it, so that's what we try to do as a truck guy. So when you're looking for it, whether it's a Google search, or an Amazon search, or a Barnes & Noble search, put in Truck Nets book. If you put in just Truck Nets, you will see those ceramic sculpture things. So anyway, let's put in truck, that's the book. And you can find us, and it goes on sale September 27th. Andre and I will be down at Texas State Fair, like the 30th of September. We're talking about the book, you know, you guys can find us. We've run around circles down there, Texas State Fair. We've got some radio shows. But, so the book comes out, you know, we need to write, to buy it, and tell me what you think of it. Try to do a good job with something that you can actually use. There's not that many truck books out there, especially guys that kind of walk you through a lot of the decision processes and you know, how to choose things. There's a section on how to buy a used truck. I spent you know several pages long trying to you know, get it to where you can understand you know what works for you and how to find that right truck at the right price and be able to match it to the right trailers. That's all important. You know, it's very complicated what you're doing your toy. You need to know, you know, a lot of things. You need to know gross combined weight rating. You need to know axle gower, gross axle weight rating. You need to know payload, all those formulas to make sure that you're safe with your family towing down the road. That's what we try to bring out in the book. But anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it.